hope you won't end up among those people who covered my job. <laughs> you probably sort of come to my office to see how I'm doing. <laughs> and I take my vitamins, so I'm not planning to leave anytime soon. <laughs> You can imagine that I have seen a couple of children's books in my career, and I want to congratulate all the writers and illustrators of the five books I got to see. They were wonderful, and I had a very difficult time to choose. So I don't want to make a long speech, but I thought because you showed such talent that I should just give you a few tips, whoever you are. Uh, those of you who write, or those of you who make the pictures, but maybe you would consider making more books, even if you are not the main winner today. So here are just a few brief tips. Remember, if you write a story, because not every book has a story, there are other ways of expression, expressing your ideas. Remember that your story should have feeling. Books are like people a little bit. You remember those that have feelings. So read through it again and just let your heart speak. If you decide to write a story, remember it has to have a beginning, a middle, and an end. It should go like this. Hopefully the beginning has some drama. And of course the middle has drama. And at the end, it has drama too. But you sort of go, <sighs> so remember this curve. And for those of you, many of those of you are too young to maybe know the book that is probably the icon of the 20th century. It's called Where the Wild Things Are by Maurice Sendak. Please go and have a look at that book and then see what I, I'm telling you about the drama at the beginning and what happened then. <laughs> and then he goes back home and there was his supper, still warm and waiting for him. It's perfect. It's perfect to copy. So I challenge you. Talking about where the wild things, one other tip for those of you who want to go on. I encourage you to go to your public library. And if you want to make picture books as you did, go to the young children's section and sit down and read one book after the other. And pretty soon, you're going to see why, why where the wild things are is such an acclaimed book and why some other books don't measure up because when you go home and you don't remember the book, chances are it needs some improvement. So just read and look at pictures as much as you can. One other tip, especially for the person who is the winner today who, and whom I don't know. There is a society which is, has its headquarters in Los Angeles and I brought my favorite issue because I just think this cover is cool. This group of about 35,000 children's book writers and illustrators is called the Society for Children's Book Writers and Illustrators. And I hope whoever won this award today will perhaps ask his or her parents to get a membership in this organization and be able to attend the summer conference or conferences around the country is wonderful. And you will really be able to blossom because you will be among people who will sort of propel you forward. Another uh, venue for those of you who like to write and illustrate perhaps the finest children's book magazine in the United States. It's called Cricket, like the little bug. You can send your stories to Cricket, and many children's book writers and, uh, and illustrators began their careers like that. So Cricket, chirp, chirp. And <laughs> all of this is so easy to find on, uh, online. And finally, 
come and see me at the Life of Congress. We have plenty of books. <laughs> <laughs> I think nobody really knows for sure, but I think, I'm guessing, between 500 and 600,000 children's books alone. So just sort of a drop in the bucket, because the library has about 130 million books and movies and pictures and so forth. So I bet you, you're going to find something there, and you will also sort of get more fertilized by that place. So again, all the best to all of you five winners, and uh, rock on. <laughs>